Hello, everyone. How are you? I know it's the end of the day. You might be a little bit tired. So hopefully you will like this talk and you will learn new interesting things. Well, my name is Anta. <laughs> I'm a web developer. And today I'm going to talk to you about machine learning and JavaScript. So machine learning and JavaScript. Before we really start, I would like to introduce you a few basic concepts in order for you to better understand what we will talk about later. And also for those that are not especially familiar with machine learning, not to be completely lost. So first, what is machine learning? Well, according to Arthur Samuel, Machine learning is, gives computer the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed for it. When we do machine learning, finally, what we always almost do is to create a model and to make some prediction. So, here is a case of a linear regression model. A linear regression model is a model based on continuous value, like a mathematical function. So in order to train your model, what you will need is some training data. A training data, it's just the correlation between an input, also called a feature, and an output, also called a label. So once your model is trained, what you will do is basically to feed it with some input, and it will give you an output. How illustrated in this image? Well, here we have a neural network model and with three layers, and we feed it with some images, images of animal. And we expect our model to tell, her, to tell us which animal it is. So here I feed it with the image of a dog, for example, and I expect my model to tell me that is indeed a dog with a certain accuracy. Because remember, it's prediction. So, well, when we talk about JavaScript, we obviously think about the web, right? So now I would like to talk to you about machine learning in the browser. So one question that you might have is why you would like to do machine learning with JavaScript and moreover in the browser? <laughs> Wait. You will see that there is quite some interesting advantages about doing that. So first of all, a wider access and distribution. Well, almost all the modern device today, they have a web browser installed. And almost all the, web, the, almost all the modern web browser can run JavaScript on it. So obviously, it leads us to a wider access and distribution over all of these devices. Privacy. Well, people are more concerned about sharing their raw data to companies that they don't even know sometimes. And in another hand, companies, they don't necessarily want user raw data because it's more responsibilities for them to manage. So by being able to run a machine learning algorithm directly on the user device means that the user doesn't have to systematically share his or her raw data to a company. So more privacy. Distributing, just distributed computing. Well, here, now every user is able to contribute in improving a shared model. So this can reduce the cost of computing power to continuously train a model. And finally, no installation required. Well, a simple link in the web page and you're ready to go but we will see it later. So all of this lead us to 
TensorFlow JS. A little bit of context here. Later in 2017, the Brain team at Google released a library called DeepLearn.js. And this library since evolved into TensorFlow.js. Well, as you can imagine, TensorFlow.js is a library that allows you to do some machine learning with JavaScript. So here is the architecture of TensorFlow.js. We have two main parts here. The operation API, so basically is where you have access to all the low-level operation, and is similar to TensorFlow, for those that know it. And the layers API, it's more of an abstraction level over the operation API, and is more similar to Keras. It makes your life easier. You will see why. So, you can use TensorFlow.js on the browser, and it's based on WebGL. WebGL is basically an API that allows you to use the capabilities of the GPU. And you can also use TensorFlow.js on Node.js. So, this allows you to fully take advantage all the capabilities of your hardware. Another question that you might have is, what about performance? Because we are talking about JavaScript here, and this is a legitimate question. So, here a little benchmark between TensorFlow and TensorFlow.js. So, first, here we have um, this benchmark is running the mobile net model on first a machine with a quite powerful graphical card, and in the other hand, with a quite basic one. And you can see that TensorFlow.js is not as fast or faster than TensorFlow, yes, but it's faster enough for most of the use cases. We will see what you are able to do with it with a little demo. So, Demo time. <laughs> I like risk, so I decided to do a live demo. Um, who is using Tinder here? I don't see everybody, but... <laughs> okay, I was joking. I didn't expect anybody to answer this question. <laughs> who knows Tinder and how it works? Perfect. So I don't have to explain how it works, right? Uh, I don't know about you, but I find it quite annoying to use your finger to like, dislike a picture, like, endlessly, you know? So I was thinking, like, imagine you're busy with your hand doing I don't know what, I don't want to know. And you would like to use your application still, you know? And like or dislike a picture, you know? Like, multitask. Come on. So <laughs> I came up with the idea of... Uh, Tinder with a little bit of machine learning. Okay. Okay. So, demo. So here is my little Tinder, the uh, UX in the room. Don't criticize. So, <laughs> so what I will do basically is to teach. Now we're gonna we we are going to create and to train a model directly in the browser live, and I'm going to teach my model to tell, he, to tell it what yes is and what no is. And it can be basically whatever, a gesture, I don't know, an animal or your cat, whatever. So now I go to the settings. Hopefully everything goes fine. So um, here is no and here is yes. Okay, so I'll take uh, some example. Don't I tell you him that, for example, I say this is no, and this is yes. I train it. 
Bam, 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 bam. Success. I hope it's really a success. <laughs> so now I go in home. So here I put some images of JavaScript framework. You know, I don't want to hurt anybody and put the picture somewhere. So I'm not like Tinder. So here I start Angular, sorry, but no. So, no, yes, yes, no, yes. Well. <laughs> So I hope some guy at Tinder, they are watching me right now, so push the idea, because it's useful. <laughs> so now what we are going to do is to go through all of the steps that I achieve in order to build this demo. And at the same time, it will allow you to see what TensorFlow.js provides you as a feature to, to do all of it, actually. So, now, maybe you remarked that the training was quite fast, right? I was in the browser, like, it was quite fast. It's because it's used a technique that is called transfer learning. So basically what it is, is that I took a model, pre-trained, that is already trained with thousands and thousands of images. I create a new model based on this model, and I customize it to fit my needs. It make it faster. So, step one. What do we do? We load and we convert the pre-trained model. So I talk to you about uh, the transfer learning. So what I will do here is to get a model from Keras and to convert it to make it TensorFlow.js ready and to use it to create my new model. So TensorFlow.js allows you to do that. So to the left, you have a piece of code in Python where I import a model from Keras a mobile net model, which is good for classification and is not that heavy. I save it on the file system, and then TensorFlow.js provides me a utility script that allows me to convert this model to a model TensorFlow.js ready. So now we go to the JavaScript part. This utility script will generate a JSON file. So this JSON file basically um, contains two main parts. The model topology, which is basically how your model is organized, and the weight manifest. So from this JSON file, you will be able to load the model with the TensorFlow.js method load model. You just give a JSON file to this method. So step two. So in the demo, what do I do? I take some picture with my webcam, and this is my training uh, data when I go to the setting first. So collecting the training data, there is a really useful method in TensorFlow.js. I talked to you about the abstraction level uh, part, and from pixel is a method that allows you to transform a raw image into a tensor. What is a tensor? A tensor is basically the primary unit of data. It's basically like an n-dimension array. So I use the method. It gives me a tensor because my model understands a tensor and not a raw image. So once I have my tensor, what do I do is that I add it to my training data set with the corresponding label. Remember, we saw the case of the linear regression model with the label, which is basically what you would like to predict. Your feature or your input is what you give to your, mo you give to your model. So here, 
in the settings, what I do is I take this picture and I label it. Yes, or I label it no. So when I train, my model knows that yes is this and no is this. So this is about collecting the training data. Step three, what do we do? We have the data, we can train our model. But we need to create and to compile it first. So on the top, I create a sequential model. What is a sequential model? It's basically a model where the output of a layer is the input of the next layer. So here I create a sequential model with some layer. We saw in the image of the neural network model with the layer, you know, with the nodes. And so here I create three layers, quite basic. I put some arguments, so some argument here, just a few of them. Unit is the number of nodes on your layer. Use bias, either to use a bias or not. Activation function, an activation function is just a function that determines the output of a node. And then we compile our model. We pass it an optimizer and a loss function. If you would like to know more about all of this that is very specific to machine learning, like loss function, activation function, optimizer, I will put some links in, on a um, takeaway slide and you can go and learn more about it. So, step four. We have our model, we have our training data, so what do we do? We train it, right? So, here the method to do so is fit, the fit method. And this method is asynchronous. We are in JavaScript, remember. So, <laughs> So this method is asynchronous because you don't know how much time your training will take. So this fit method is taking some argument, like for example, the batch size, which is the number of example by gradient update. Still, more information in the takeaway take slide. We have 20 minutes. So epoch, which is the number of iteration, and callbacks. You have a list of events that you can uh, listen to here. And here is just one of them on batch end at the end of one batch. So this is about the training. So we collect the data, we create our model, we train it, we train it. So what? It's ready to use, right? So now we make some prediction. So now our model is supposed to know he's like a master. You give it an image and it tells you what it is. So here the prediction part, um, basically you have some code right here, but what you need to, to focus on is the predict method on the model. It's this method that allows you to make the prediction. So, this is about the prediction. And there is no more steps. We are done. So, well, what you will have to, to, to remember from this talk is that machine learning and JavaScript being a thing, it's something quite young and fresh still. Even if the web is faster and faster, it still has its limitation. And that's why the brain team at Google, for example, is working on the server side part of TensorFlow.js. We focus on TensorFlow.js, but you have other libraries that allows you to do some machine learning with JavaScript, like Keras.js or Brain.js. Again, on the takeaway slide. And so I think that there is many web standards coming that will really change the game. And the use case, the panel of use cases are really interesting in the term of educational and interactive purpose. So I really wonder until where we will be able to push the boundaries of the web. So, 
a little takeaway. I talk about it. So I put some link here that I think are quite useful if you would like to learn more about machine learning and JavaScript and machine learning in general. So I will share it later, so don't worry. And thank you. Thank you.